Hey guys, welcome to Prints and Props. Today I'm going to be showing you my Ant-Man helmet. Here we go. Where you go when you want some prints, but you also want props. Prints and props. Yeah. All right, guys. So as you can see, we've got my Ant-Man helmet here. Um, I tried my very, very best to get this as close to the movie as humanly possible. Um, it took me a long time to 3D model it, uh, print it out, do all the sanding, uh, make a mold, and all that stuff. Um, I'll be showing a little bit of a time lapse of that process um, in the video, but this is not a video about 3D modeling and 3D printing. Um, it's a video about my Ant-Man helmet. So here we go. I'll just kind of do a quick tour of it. Um, you know, obviously we've got the front here. Um, it's fully lit up. It's controlled by a, a switch on the side of the helmet and um, a single CR2032 battery. Um, so as you can see here, we've got our weathering. We've got our nice metallic finish. Um, yeah. So that's kind of what the helmet looks like in 360. So to move the faceplate up and down, you just press this button on the right side of the helmet, just like the one in the movie. Faceplate goes up, give it kind of a nice little pull on the mouth, mouth goes down, then you press it again, and it closes. Um, and the other cool thing about this helmet is that it actually comes apart just like the movie helmet. So you can open the faceplate up, move it down, you can actually unlatch this piece and unplug the mouth from the uh, cable connector that connects the lights, and you can see it looks just like the one from the movie. So, and this piece here is actually removable and just snaps into place. Uh, and then so whenever you are wearing the helmet and you want the faceplate to be uh, up, you can pull that piece out um, just like they did in the movie whenever the faceplate was up. So, that's how that works. And then you can just go, snap this back in, make sure you're wire is closed. Snap that back in, make sure everything's tight, close the faceplate back up, and you're ready to go. What I'd like to do now, guys, is just give you a little bit of a tour of um, kind of how the electronics work inside the helmet and how the mechanics work and everything like that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. So first thing you want to do is pop open the faceplate and if you look on the inside, you can see here resides a, um, a uh, 2400 milliamp uh, lithium ion polymer battery from Adafruit. Um, it's their flat pack battery. And uh, so I'll put a link in the video description to buy that battery. Also, um, that is connected to a PowerBoost 1000C which um, charges the battery via a micro USB connector, but also um, also boosts the 3.7 volts from the battery to 5 volts to run the motors. Uh, now these are 9 volt motors, so they can run all the way up to 9 volts. Um, but if you run them at 9 volts, then when the faceplate is up like this, um, they can actually uh, burn out um, from hitting their torque limit, but still getting power. So I decided to run them at five volts um, to just try to save the motors a little bit. Then if we turn around to the other side of the helmet, we can see here, this is just a single CR2032 battery and a holder um, that makes it super easy to swap the batteries in and out. Here we go guys, I just wanted to go ahead and give a better shot of the mechanics on the inside. As you can see, here's that battery. Everything is just taped with extra strength duct tape on the inside to hold everything in place. If you look really closely where that blue light is, it's kind of covered because it's jammed down beneath the motors. That's the 500C. That's actually the um, micro USB port on the 500C. If you look here, you can see that that is uh, where the motors are. These are very long um, and very strong uh, uh, brushless DC motors from Fallhaber. Uh, I got them off of eBay. They are kind of expensive. They are $50 a motor. Um, so definitely not cheap, but they're small and very strong and have a lot of torque. So that's why I chose them for this application. Uh, they do have motor encoders to run them as a servo. 
uh, but I don't have that uh, functionality built into this helmet since it just simply needs to go up, hit its torque limit, and then uh, gravity pulls it down. Uh, and as you can see, there is an arm here that's a 3D printed arm that uh, allows the, um, the uh, connection to the motor, to the faceplate, which is just attached via a screw right there. Um, so you can see, same thing on the other side, we have the same, uh, the same actuator here uh, that completely mirrors the other side. And there you can see the CR2032 battery, and you can also see the lights uh, connectors um, that connect the lights for the faceplate as well as the lights for the mouth. All right, if you guys like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up, and if you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Let me know what I can do better. Um, also, feel free to subscribe to my channel um, to see more prints and props. Um, also, just, before, just so you guys know, um, the files for this are not available. This helmet is not available for sale in any way. Um, I just wanted to show off what I made and uh, just uh, so you guys could see it and enjoy it. And hopefully uh, this might inspire you to go out there and make your own 3D printed props. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much and we'll see you next time.